the play on the game here. Like fruits can be used against Pac-Man, the tree and the hydra can be used against Pac-Man. So Ikin has a lot to work you know, work against, really, versus Cat. Yeah, the fact that he has Moncho as a training partner, considering they're both from XG. Yes. And Moncho, a bit of an underrated performance, if I do say so myself. He did really really well in bracket overall and actually managed to keep kept in last stock situations yes. overall and now we're seeing the best in Puerto Rico take on one of the best in Japan and see what's gonna happen now as we move to small battlefield for game one so we're seeing some use of the, the charge pellet but it does seem like a little bit awkward like he's trying to use this armor to kind of go through the slingshot and the gyro but 35% racked up is not maybe that significant, but there we go, a pocket of the Hydrant. This can be used against him, but you know, this is probably how the game's gonna look a lot, where the, the damage you're gonna rack up slowly. Is there, Pac-Man and Villager may not be as explosive as let's say Rob or Peach, or even, you know, uh, Big Gunner, for example, like earlier Capitancito, but the thing is, is that this, these two characters are playing very utility-based stage presence. And that's going to be the name of the game here. Where how much space they're controlling with their aerials, with, with the projectiles, and how far can you take it. Yeah, side specials on Inking are something that I've never seen him do before. And the reason why he's actually putting it up is because he's mitigating every single one of the projectiles that Dillinger is throwing out in the first place. So that's why he's using it now. He's actually making the Lloyd rocket explode a lot earlier than what you would be used to doing it. Just a 2% differential in between the two, some methodical play definitely going to be the name of the game through the entire set. I do got to say, the charge the charge pellet to interrupt the gyro is very smart because you're going to need stuff to kind of clash the things, but there's no clashing with an up smash. It's just full of fireworks. It's fire. You're going to get burned. Yeah, but it's definitely a punish onto Iki's aggressiveness that time. Um, he should be able to focus a lot more when it comes to his projectile play recognition on Kev to know that the side special was still up and actually using the axe from Timber to get some more damage in and rack it up as soon as possible. Like, you know, maybe at first it doesn't seem like these are two zoners, but when they start bruising, like they're acting like bruisers, is when Kev has his uh, axe at hand. But, and er and earlier we're seeing here that Ikki is trying to swing a lot with his forward air and attack with, you know, like strong moves, but then, ooh. Oh. Just a big call on the regular getup, the bowling ball. It's just going to snuff it out. Doing a really good job, Kektis, actually keep thinking honest all the time. Using constant fares, back airs, and what have you. 157% is definitely not going to be enough. Now, Villager is actually deceptively heavy. 160% surviving so far. Inking needs to start finding something quick. A back air could be a reversal of fortunes for this first game, but it's not looking like it. I gotta say, the way Kep uses his gyro, he had anticipated that Eking was gonna fall with an aerial and he used the activation of the gyro to clank with the aerial and the explosion then stops it for the, uh, the aerial to continue on. So he's kind of using it like an air parry in this, in this, in this scenario. So very smart. Eking, one stock on the 96%, but he could use his ass to get more information. This is a best of five, and the charge plant was working effectively, but now it's just a matter of like, can you stop Gyro from being as effective in the next game? He actually goes for get up attack that time. Kept anticipates, just goes ahead and buries him, and goes for up smash that time. As we're seeing a little bit of an instant replay from the bowling ball, actually punishing the neutral get up, and now we're gonna see the get up attack one more time getting punished. That's just a testament to Cap's reaction time overall. He can using different options all the time, but Cap is still managing to actually get some stuff going. We are seeing the Pac-Man one more time. We do keep in mind that there are other characters in Eking's arsenal, be it Lucina and Wolf. But let's see what's gonna happen here in game two. Maybe he found something out. Like, he hasn't really been able to use his fruits to his potential. He got the bell wasn't as fully effective. The backer didn't kill, and that was quite unfortunate for Eking. But now we're seeing a little bit more, less grounded play from Eking. He's going a bit more vertical, using his jump, and he's actually able to kind of bait with the with the fruit charge. So every time he sees kept a little bit far, starts charging the fruit, and then kept his force to approach. Definitely doing a lot better this time, wrecking up the percents. Uh, good recognition on him to actually know when the villager wants to approach and what not. Just using Nair out of shield as well. Such a rapid move that um, Pac-Man has. 
to deal with any type of pressure that villagers are going to be starting to throw out. That was actually pretty impressive that it, all that clanked, and now very fortunate that E King's clunk, uh, you know, the clanking and the collision worked out for Zero. Not too much percent, but it could have been scary because those up airs are really scary. I do not want to miss with those turnips ever. I really like how said up airs from Kept are actually keeping the hydrant on its honest when it comes to its own hitbox. He's just throwing it out and keeping it a little bit delayed and actually manages to punish him that time. It look, could have been a little bit of an error of execution by Kept. You know, errors of execution, it happens all the time. He, will Ikin uh, forgive it? No, he won't. Very good, takes a stock, 77. And now we're seeing where Ikin is definitely playing around. He's using the drift more. He's kind of fading back in and out. So, and that's working very well for him. And the charge plus stops the gyro, but a hydrant comes sw swinging in. Kept is also going to use your projectiles against you. One, two, three hits to 104%. But now it's Ink Eastern actually gets some stuff going. And moving a little bit with a drag down there, or rather a falling there to actually get some offense in. It's not quite going to be enough because Kept is actually anticipating it from the start. Sending him upwards for a little combinations. Lloyd Rocket actually stopped the up air strings. A 62% of extra credit. And it's doing a pretty good job by Inky, but he needs a little bit more, I believe. You know, 139 is pretty high, but he got a lot of good brownie points here. 62% uh, for elite is really good. The, he had gotten that first grab with the throw, but, he, you know, Kept hasn't really been blocking all that much. There's not that many scenarios where you can get these grabs, and, you know, you can get a less draft scenario. He had him in the corner, but the tree and the gyro helped him stall enough, and he can have to respect. So a lot of ha a lot of here, Ethan has to make some call outs to get potential kills or just rack up more damage. Yeah, it needs to be careful though. Oh, okay, the pocket actually makes um, the bell drop and he can use it one more time. Pocket it, pockets it again, 102%. So using four smash to get rid of the Hydra as soon as possible. Uh, the orange is gonna be the projectile that's from the name of the game by E-King. Um, that you think that was the fastest do? orange I ever seen, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> What do you think he needs to do actually to get some more damage? Because it's been pretty difficult for Kek as he continues to put up that wall. Like, there's very few times where Kept is actually overcommitting. Like that grab, some of those grabs of his. Ooh, oh, what an edge guard! So, you know, the edge guard. Most often, you never see the balloon ever get popped. Both of them, but the hydrant was able to yep. hit him. Didn't didn't hit the villager himself, but. It was actually, I think that's so crazy that he, that Iki was aware and spaced the downer not to hit the villager after popping the balloon. I think that was one of the things that is going to help further on. Iki will be watching out for those now on. Yeah, Aerial Drift is going to be the name of the game for Iki. Barely missing the mark, which was exactly what he needed to take away this stock as soon as possible and exert the dominance, forcing Kept to actually get a lot more aggressive and feel pretty much uncomfortable that time as Eking actually gets to 120 What a hitbox extension there for the Rags. That tree, that timber tree is uh, bad news for sure. I gotta say, there is something that Eking really recently has been trying to do. Every time that there's gyro, there is a moment where the animation is not active and he throws an aerial and he's able to knock Villager out of it, so he can't start trying to fish for a little bit some gyro commitments. He can use this to gonna wait for it. And just the, this, this is just a forwarder, not a strong punish, but I'm seeing a lot better counterplay versus the gyro, which is a main a main staple here yeah. for Kept against Pac Man. And she's trying to go for the up air one more time to uh, anticipate the jumping get up recovery. He's gonna go out for 97%. Now Iki doing a really solid job at baiting out. When he's actually gonna go down and forward smash is gonna actually trade with the option that Captain's gonna go for. So E King evens it up. I gotta say, so the first stock was mostly a misstep. The gyro kept got on the gyro. Yeah. And E King capitalized on it. But something the I feel like something really clicked here for E King because he wasn't playing as grounded as he was in game number one. He actually started jumping a bit more, fading back, he started charging the fruit. And that kind of forced Kept to move forward. When Kept tried to throw the gyro, 
if it wasn't a fully charged, if it was an orange and a strawberry, he would throw it. That would click. If it was far enough, he would use a charge pellet. So he is using a lot of good counterplay versus Gyro, and that's going to be very significant. Kept try to kept try to do some anti airs with the up tilt and up smash, but E King dodged them all. So those were the biggest things in game number two, the biggest changes. Great. Saving up a little bit of the timber that time. A roll in just to not get that damage. But now Kept is actually putting that gas into the pedal as Lloyd Rockets are going to start coming out as the fruits by Iki starts to getting charged up. A couple of fares to set up tech situations, which is one of Iki's favorite things to do. Ooh. I wonder what Iki was trying to go for there. If you that hitbox is touching on the gyro, because there he knew the gyro was coming, but the, maybe the hydrant itself was not the correct call if you're going to make a call like that. Yeah, he knew Lloyd Rocket was going to explode on top of him as soon as he grabbed and actually went for the up throw because it's a longer hitbox. Nevertheless, kept actually getting him on the outside with a sweet spot back here. I've been calling this gyro, right? Yes, you have. But it's a Lloyd I, Rocket. It's Lloyd Rocket. <laughs> I, swear, I swear, man, when I played Animal Crossing, they call it some gyro kind of thing. Maybe that's just how I, I envisioned it when I was a kid. Nevertheless, I did understand what you were going for, especially Lloyd Rockets in coming in. They have been a little bit predictable. That's why E King has been able to punish him so far. And using the, the side special on Pac Man to actually make it explode, and he's able to react so quickly. Captain's not, definitely not expecting it, and he's taking advantage of it. But. I'm loving, I'm loving how Ikin is playing this game, these, these games. After that adaptation, there's definitely a better game plan here. Now it's just a matter of like trying to get this KO is tough. Kept is great at stalling the for the kill setup. He does, he knows how, some of the win conditions that Pac-Man has. You know, after playing somebody like T, he's very rec you know, very familiar with these. Of course. But the gyro, the not the gyro, the Lloyd Rocket, Lloyd Rocket, the Lloyd go. Rocket itself. It's going to be pivotal here if we can make some call-outs for Aiken. Yeah, but 88% now after a couple of pellet tosses with the fair. 90% of extra credit. Kat is showing domination here in game three. Let's see how Aiken actually manages to respond. But back throw is going to be the name of the game for Kat. who just keeps on timbering. <gasps> back throw kills here. Yes, it does. And the reason why it hit was because he actually went for the accent one more time and extended a villager just a little bit and just enough to actually get that back throw, 111% of extra credit. He was very close to continue on his forward air train, but one one here one thing here is that Kept has not been doing, throwing out his, uh, not using his grab as often as earlier before. He's kind of realizing that is a big commitment. It only really works kind of like if somebody does a bad landing option. So he's being, he's being more careful there. You know, uh, Iki did a, a four tip, Four tilt commitment, and he's just like, you know what? You did a back throw. I got, I got one too. Yeah, he's definitely gonna start try to space that out a lot more. Just punishing the non tech with an up smash and getting it up to 27% now. He can use the Galaga one more time, but it doesn't really get any type of mark. And another situation where Kept is on the ledge but manages to recover safely. The thing is, is that as well, he has to be careful how he uses the fruit and the ledge trapping because kept, you know, Villager has a wall jump. He could do a wall jump pocket and just take that thing and use it against him. The, in here, the charge pellet has not been as effective. And it's, it's very unfortunate that the Lloyd Rocket uh, doesn't leave the pellet because that also could have been like, you know, 1% here and there where he could recover. So, you know, it's quite unfortunate that Iki's pellet just, just disappears after clanking. Okay, committals, back and forth, up smashes, and bells alike. Hydrant right in the middle of the stage. Let's see what options are going to go for. Actually going the Lloyd Rocket extended the duration so the pocket did not grab it and that, made, that means that you know he lost because he tried to pocket it. Now the Hydrant is actually going to get pocketed this time. 99% on to Iki. What type of offense is he going to go for just to not get hit by the villager and try to get this third game? That's like the first time I see the charge button not disappear. And it's because he angled it upward. He actually decided to aim for the Lloyd Rocket. So he's going upwards this time. Not quite going to get him. That was a two out of three one. It's a one third of chance to actually get the full three turnips every time you use down air and up air as villager. Lloyd Rockets is going to cover the ground and the rest of the pellets are actually going to cover the rest of the air. 150% now onto Eking as the Hydrant is going to come down for the tech situation. Timber is barely going to miss the mark. Get, get up, up attack. attack works! Oh my gosh, in the, in the, in the stage here, I'm actually feeling very tense and desperate because Eking has not been able to leave the left side. The air to air call out with the us smash 
there is a lot of attempts here for KOs for Cat, but E King, he just he's holding out, he's being strong. Tree here. No, no, he a couple of rolls. rolls. The rolls. A couple of rolls. Actually going for the orange that time, 164%, setting up Lloyd's one more time. Pellets are going to come out by Kept. There's a minute and 50 left on the clock, Yoma. There's a good possibility that timeout is in the cards for Kept. If I think Kept, he's just going to go for uh, either an unsmash read as well, because, like, Iki wants to rack up percent. The fastest way right now is with his aerial, so he, if he's at the range, he's probably going to go for an smash. But he gets a, a combination Gaga. for 74. 74. This is something. This is something. Oh, he got a pivot F smash. I don't know if he, if he wanted that. I'm pretty sure he, that was the AB input that he uses. Probably like a forward to actually try to exploit the Lloyd Rocket that time. 74% now, a differential of 100%, and a minute 10 remaining on the game. Very good. There's so much patience here from both players, but Ikin has been able to rack up percent. Before, it did look like it was impossible, but 93%. If there's a bell, it will be an F smash, and it'll be over. But now the Galaga goes oh. through, and a fresh back here ends the stock. Really good placings and defense by Kept all day long. High percent, one minute left on the clock. Patience is a virtue, especially when you're fighting against the villager. He really took advantage of it. That last stock, I was holding my breath a yeah. lot. I don't, I don't, like, there was a moment there where, like, I'm not sure, like, because of the scramble, I didn't know which way the, the tide would change to. And, you know, there was a sense where, like, because E King hadn't died, there, the movie ending was changing. I feel, you know, when you consider like a game, like if this is like a movie or a show, that there was a, like a sudden switch. In the in the climax, and right there it was very close, and I just, you know, I'm very excited to see game number four. Like, Iki realized a lot of things in terms of like how you could, you know, stuff up the Lloyd Rocket, how he could, you know, use the fruits to kind of go through. Not all fruits are able to blow up the rocket itself, yeah. but there he definitely was figuring stuff out. Interesting pick on Final Destination. Projectiles are gonna be everybody's favorite. And obviously the song is also a banger. Shout out to Persona 5. And now it's Kept's turn to actually, well, keep eking on the right side and set, constantly set up just ledge traps and edge guards. So, small battlefield, I, well, I think was game number two. No, right? Game, yeah, game number two was yeah. small battlefield was Kept's counter pick, right? Uh, game, then game number three. And now this is E King's uh, counter pick. I don't. The armor's through, but yeah. I don't know how. No platforms can help him. I actually felt that the platforms was beneficial for Pac Man in the matchup. Yeah, just because you can find other ways to actually recover safely. Look at that oh, bowling ball that's barely so close. missing. It, it actually hit the trampoline downward and eventually just hit him one more time because E King was trying to find it and he couldn't find it. That so that's beautiful recognition and beautiful execution by Caps. That is just that is heartbreaking. When you're able to kind of like try to rely on your recovery and you can't because your opponent was able to activate one of the uses, I, I think that just goes like I can't I have to be care more careful with my recovery. And that kind of can help make you mess up if you're trying to be more cautious. Look at these types of ledge traps done by Cat. And this is full combo, Yoma. He cannot leave until Timber actually dissipates. Good as the eye on him, but already at 95%. Yeah, Kept is looking to get control and wants to get into winner's finals as soon as possible, pocketing the Hydrant and just tossing it back. This is this is difficult. This is rough. It's looking real hard for Eking right now. In terms, like, if you're trying to make a comeback, especially how Kept has been looking this game, this is it's, it's the worst mountain to climb. It's not a big mountain, it's the worst mountain. 88% now directional air dodge by the villager. It's gonna get punished for just a little bit. Trampolines are gonna go down. And now it's Eking's turn to actually try to set up any type of left trap or edge guard situations. But Kate kept just persistently using the recoveries and mix-ups to get onto the stage as soon as possible. Forward smash is going to land on the mark. Big mountain to climb by Eking, though, to force a game five. So he was able to get a lot of stuff going with the percentages, but kept trying to be cheeky with some footstool combos and some follow-ups. And the ledge trump axe kill! Oh, my God! Yeah, kept is definitely looking like one of the favorites to take it this time as we see an instant replay come out actually reversing 
once again, the Hydrant and the Reflector. Oh. Beautiful lead trump into a reverse um, down special to take that last talk. Ket sitting comfortably in winner's finals as they await the next match, which is going to be Sonics versus Lima. The Ket was saving yeah. that reversal axe for the entire set. And, and you know, he, he it's one of those things where, like, it's not time yet. You know, I see you holding ledge, but it's not time yet. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to wait 